Hello, David. Yes. It's Bob from the FedEx. Okay. And we have a package that arrived for you. Oh, great. And but um, it looks like they hadn't sent it to the to China yet, because we have to send it to they... for the Chinese government to monitor. So we had to. I I don't know if they called you yet. I just needed to let you know that your package isn't actually ready yet because we've had to send it off to the Chinese government. And after what? after they take a look through it, they'll send it right back. They have an expedited shipping service. You'll hardly know it was gone, but it'll be it'll be here in two days. Wait, what? I, I don't understand why a package I have is being looked at by the Chinese government. Well, they they do this with all the packages. They usually go to the Chinese government first. And then they come back here. Why? What, what? I don't understand. What does this have to do with the Chinese government? Oh, the Chinese government, they monitor all the packages that come through our store. They give us extra money to do that. They just open up the box and just kind of rifle around. Is this a joke? I, I don't understand. No, it's not a joke. It's just it's something that the uh, certain franchises of FedEx do to make extra money. And it, it helps us keep your shipping costs a little bit lower. What? So, so they open up my package and look at it. Yeah, yeah. They just kind of look around and inspect it, write down the contents, and they write down your name and address and all of the stuff from the packing slip, and then they send it right back to us. It's a really fast process. But yeah, I think they may have called you already and told you it was ready, but it's not ready. We have to send it back up, up to China first, and then they'll send it right back. Am I able to opt out of this service, or I have no choice? Oh, no, no, it absolutely, if you're going to use our shipping center, if you're going to use, yeah, if you're going to use us, it, it has to go through the Chinese government. It just so it, every package that FedEx sends, it doesn't even make sense. Every package that FedEx sends, you're telling me it goes through China? Yeah, through the Chinese, yes, and they send it right back. It, right. it used to be faster, because the, the Chinese government, they actually had um. You know, they had a building here in the United States, but since all this craziness how is, is that legal? I'm trying to understand how that's legal. Well, since it's through China, we don't have to follow federal guidelines for, you know, not going through your mail and stuff. I mean, you realize how bizarre this sounds? Or no, maybe not. I, I yeah, don't know I don't know. I've been here for seven years now, and this is just how it's always been done. Yeah, I, I, yeah now that you mention it, I guess I was a little surprised by it all when I first started working here. But they're they're just they're right. just writing well, down your name and phone number and just you yeah. Know, I don't really want the Chinese government to have my name and phone number and what I buy. But okay. But what does it matter? What are they going to do with it? It's not like I, uh, I I don't know. But I mean, if I had the option of having them have it or not having them have it, I'd say not having them have it. But yeah. all right. Well, you could use UPS and pay twice as much because they don't do that. Hmm. But that's how we keep prices down. Okay. You stupid motherfucker. All right. So quit, well, quit questioning our, our tactics here. But uh, we'll give you a call. Where are you at? We'll give you a call. What store are you at? Which, which location? I'm, I'm, I'm at FedEx. Yeah. On what? It's the one you usually come to. Let me talk to your boss. He's unavailable right now. Hey, let, me, let me talk to someone else in there. Everyone's busy. Let me talk to Marissa. Chad's with let the customer. Let me cus- talk to Marissa. She's not here today. Chad's with the customer. Broadcasting from the PLA Situation Room in Roy, New Mexico. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Now it's time. Cactus. 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 Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus. 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 This cocksucker. Cactus. 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 You gotta be crap on my ball. Cactus. 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 This is gonna be a fuck job to edit. Cactus. 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 Roy, the retarded boy. Cactus. 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 And today's sponsors here. Let me make a quick phone call. Thanks for calling FedEx office. How may I help you? Hey there. It's Brad from the Snowplow Show. I just need to find out the sponsor names for episode 502, please. Uh, sh- uh, 
Oh, let me hold on one second. Let me oh, double check. Okay. <laughs> Start it now at FedEx.com slash bid. Uh, this better not take a long time. Sorry, everyone. Usually they have the sponsor names right there taped up next to the phone. Your call may be monitored for quality. Okay. Okay, yes, sir. I got it. Okay, great. I just need to know the names of the sponsors for today's show. Uh-huh. It has sponsors for Snow Plow Show. And it's, oh, I don't want to mispronounce. So it's, uh, the first name is Z-E-L-T-H-I-S. The next name is David J. Mm-hmm. Then there's a Brennan, which is B R E N N A N. Then the next name is Kristen, K R I S T I N E. Oh, that's Kristen. Last- oh, Christine. I'm sorry. Yeah. So K R I S T I N E. Is that correct? Yeah, that's it. Okay, and the last one, I can't pronounce, I'll spell it. So it's, oh, I can't read his hand right either. Uh, looks like he has. P H V N O R is that correct? Oh, that sounds like Thunor. Huh? I think it's. I think it should be T H U N O R. I know that guy. C H. Okay, and it, it could be T. I don't think I can just read his handwriting. Ah, what Miss Amy's good. T H U N O R. Yep, that's it. And the first name was Zelfis. Uh huh. Which is Z E L T H I S. Yep, that's it. It seems like the paper you have there is flawless. Okay. Okay. Was there was there anything else I can help you with? Nope. I guess that's it. I just need you to uh, end the phone call by saying "cactus, cactus" to me. Oh, oh, why? Why is that? Uh, It's just a. It's just a. It's just a thing we do here. (laughs) It's just something you do. Yeah. Yeah. Just say "cactus, cactus" and hang up. Oh. Okay. Cactus, cactus. Yep. Now hang up. Oh, okay. Bye. Is that correct? What's going on? Uh oh. I just got put on hold. We don't have time for this, though. Got a show to do here. So thank you, sponsors of today's show Zelfus, David J., Thunor, Brennan, and Christine. I pronounced all of those names perfectly. I don't see why it's so hard for them. What the hell, FedEx? Anyway, let's get started with today's show. I've got a bunch of announcements since I stupidly only did one snowplow show last week. Sorry about that, everyone. I did do a hobo sode, though, on Friday. I don't know why I just didn't turn that one into a snowplow show, because I spent about 35 minutes telling landlords that I was on their roof, installing barbed wire to keep people off of the roof. That was an idea from Nobby Guy. May I help you? She's telling me I can't put barbed wire on the roof. No, you can't put anything on the roof. On, on the roof. On the roof of the building? Yeah, well, it's pronounced rough. Your, your pronouncement like a Yankee. But, um, yeah, I, I just, I'm putting um, barbed wire up here on the surface of the entire roof. For what? Just to keep people off of the roof. So, yeah, there was a bunch of that. People telling me I can't put barbed wire on my roof because, you know, it's pronounced rough. That's hobo sode number 134 over at patreon.com slash phone losers. I was also on Dwight's show on Saturday night, I think for maybe the last hour of it. And then on Sunday, I was on the Party Time show with Laugh Track Matt and Zax and Wasted Memory and Carlito. I think Legend was on for a while. There's a bunch of us on the Party Time show. We talked about the California meetup happening in March of 2019. And we made a few phone calls. I can't remember what all happened. I remember I got an alunk alarm to go off. So go find the Party Time show and go find Dwight's show. Dwight's got a podcast feed now, by the way. He's finally up to 2008 levels of doing a show. And there's a podcast feed now. Now we just got to get Party Time to do that, too. Speaking of feeds, my podcasts are all on Spotify now. Isn't that exciting? They finally opened it up to the general public. It's no longer an exclusive thing. I don't know why it was in the first place. But I've added Brad's Cactus Shack and Mr. Dobelina's Wonderful World of Prank Calls and Phone Losers of America and The Snowplow Show, all to Spotify. So go to the podcast section of Spotify and search for those shows, and you should be able to find those in there. I forgot to announce on the beginning of last week's show that we're going to do the pumpkin contest thing this year again, or more like the non-contest, because I don't think I really have any good prizes to give away. Maybe some PLA stickers or something. But someone at the Denver PLA meetup a few weeks ago told me that I really should do the pumpkin contest thing again. So we're going to do that pumpkin carving contest again this year. If you're carving a pumpkin for Halloween this year, carve something PLA-ish into it, I guess, if you really want to. 
and I'll use it as show art. I'll put it up in the gallery over on Facebook or wherever else. Maybe it'll end up in the uh, the rotation on the YouTube videos of PLA pictures that go across the screen as the show plays. Another thing that I forgot to mention on the last Snowplow show is that a listener named Mac G, or I think in the voicemail he pronounced his name McG, but it clearly says on this email Mac G. Anyway, he's completely insane. He got a PLA tattoo on his arm. Full color bell symbol, PLA bell symbol, blue, yellow, red, and black. He's going to be regretting this in a few years, but it's on his arm. I'm going to make that today's show art, and I don't know. I feel like I owe him something. You want a lapel pin, Mac G, or something? I don't know. That doesn't seem like very good compensation for ruining your arm for the rest of your entire life with the PLA symbol. I kind of feel guilty now. What have you done? What have you done to yourself? In this email he sent me, he says, Dear Brad, I've been with the PLA for such a long time, and since it's my religion, I decided to get a tattoo of the PLA bell. Once I get a stable, legal job, I'll do my part to keep you alive and away from work by donating and supporting the shows. New homework assignment for listeners. Get a PLA-related tattoo and support Brad's hot white ass. Wow, thanks, McG, for saying I have a hot white ass. Cactus Cactus, happy 500, McG. You are completely insane. I can't believe you did that. What's wrong with you? There are now at least two people with full-color PLA bells in their arms. At least the bell on my arm is the bell telephone one, as if that's better somehow. But yeah, thanks, Mac G, for the show art. Let me know what I should do to make this up to you. I probably won't pay for the laser treatment to have it removed. So sorry, I'm not going to do that. But yeah, that's crazy. People getting PLA tattoos on their arm. I'm not sure I want to even encourage other people to do that. Uh, One last thing before we get started with today's show is that a bunch of people sent me a news story about a lady's roof that got accidentally replaced by Royco Roofing. It looks like Casey sent this to me. Uh, Chris sent it to me. Seems like somebody else did too. But yeah, I'm going to click on this one here. coming home and finding workers on your house removing your roof. The only problem, you never asked them to be there. Mm-hmm. An Oshawa dun, dun, family dun. is facing that exact dilemma when roofers accidentally got the wrong address and removed the wrong roof. Pat Foran has the story on Consumer Poor Alert. Pat. Michelle and Austin, the family was shocked to see their roof. So, of course, this is relevant because I've done that prank so many times. I've told people that I've removed their roof when, really, I didn't do it at all. LOL. Here, let's listen to just a little bit more of this. Now they're trying to figure out who is going to pay to replace it. They don't want to deal with the company that accidentally took it off, but they need it done soon to protect their house. So how did you feel when you found out roofers were doing your roof and you didn't ask them to? Uh, I wanted to get home right away. Jennifer Campbell of Oshawa says it was her... That sounds familiar. I've called people before, told them I'm on their roof, tearing the whole thing off, and they rush home from work to stop them. Son who called her to ask why she didn't mention they were getting a new roof. She says she rushed home to see a work crew had removed almost all the shingles from her home. The roofers had the wrong address and were supposed to be doing a roofing job three doors away. My heart sank, Uh, you know, we're calling for rain, wind, and I had a bare roof just down to the plywood. At least the plywood wasn't rotting, though, and Chad didn't fall through into the attic. You gotta look on the bright side, lady. Campbell says there were roofing materials everywhere. They didn't just remove the shingles, they left the mess everywhere. Um, Sides of the house, backyard, debris. That's how they do it, that's how it works. They're showing pictures of tarp on the ground with a bunch of shingles on top of the tarp. What are they supposed to do? Just walk down the ladder with handfuls of shingles and throw them in the dumpster? Nobody does that. Everything. When Campbell contacted the roofing company, they admitted they made a mistake and had the wrong house. She thought they would replace her roof and she was shocked when they said no, but they'd give her a good deal on a new one. I feel like, you know, it it was their mistake. Okay, yeah, I don't want to play any more of this, but I will put a link in the show notes if you want to watch the rest of this story. And I actually tracked down this lady's phone number from a Canadian White Pages site, and I've tried to call her several times. She never picks up. Let me try calling her one last time. She's probably not going to pick up, though. Sorry, we can't take your call right now. Yep. Please leave us your name and number. We'll get back to you as soon as Never we- picks up. So I'm officially giving up on this one. I'm deleting the number. And if you want to see that YouTube story, it's in the show notes on snowplowshow.com. In the story, the Riffers eventually agree to go ahead and replace her roof. But at that point, she's like, eh, I don't want them to replace it. I want someone else to replace it. Like, she won't even let them replace it in the end. 
which I suppose is understandable, but she did get her roof replaced and I guess they paid for it. The roofing company that messed up, they paid for it. So that's nice. It's a story with a happy ending. Thank you everybody that sent that in to me and posted it on the Reddit and the Facebook group. Oh yeah, Facebook group. That reminds me, Madhouse has a Facebook group now. If you care about Madhouse, I kind of do. I was looking through my groups the other day and I saw that I was a moderator of a group called the Madhouse Live Group, which started up back in 2013. But this group didn't have an admin or anything. And there was a button that I could push to make myself an admin. It was a completely dead group. So I asked Carlito if I should just start setting it up and try and make people go to it. And he's like, okay, sure, why not? I hear Facebook groups are all the rage. So there is now an active Madhouse group on Facebook. If you want to go to that, facebook.com slash groups slash Madhouse Live Fan. What a dumb URL. We don't know who set this up originally, but somebody set it up and they made me a moderator and then they disappeared forever. So thank you, whoever set that up years and years ago. We're finally going to start using the group that you made. Okay, I think that's enough for announcements. Let's listen to a brand new song by Henry. I'm flying around in a helicopter right now. A, a helicopter, you know, like a helicopter. the incident. Yeah. Places that will help you. I, I don't know. I, I don't know employment agencies. Uh, I'm a retired lady. I used to work at a hospital. I still got this paper list here from Vandershire. He gave this to me in Chicago of a bunch of people that had FedEx deliveries back in May. I can't remember if I did these on a snowplow show or on a hobo sode, but I know I got through to at least a few of these people and they were not very happy with whatever I said to them. But it looks like I have, I don't know, at least half of the list still. Hello? Hello, Diana. This is... Hey there, it's Roy from the FedEx office. Um, we delivered a package for you back in May. Um, what did you deliver? Uh, well, I don't know because we don't open the boxes. You know, we just deliver the package. Oh. Yeah. I mean, what, what are you trying to accuse us of? Like opening up the boxes and looking at them? We're not no, I didn't. I have not asked a single question about any package that was ever delivered. Okay, well, no. So I, I think you got the wrong person. What do you mean I got the wrong person? You live on Stevens Hill Road. We delivered a package on May 1st. That's right here. On right. My, right here on and my what paper. is your question? Okay. Um, the delivery guy was very distraught because he says while he was on your porch, you were opening up your window and winking your butthole at him. Yeah, right. No, that's what he says. Okay. So, well, I'm sorry that that might have happened, but I'm sure it didn't. Well, you're just, you just said it might have happened, but now you're saying it didn't. I'm sure it did not. I'm sure it did not happen, ma but whatever. On. You just need to grow um, up. I think this is a crank call, and I'm not going to talk to you. Ma'am, ma'am, just come on. Crap. Maybe I shouldn't lead with the butthole winking. I'll just say that it was the snake eyes, you know? Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Hello. Hello, Mike? Yes. Hey there, it's Roy from the FedEx office. We delivered a package to you back on May 1st, it looks like. Uh, okay. Over on way. All right. And um, the, the driver, Sensei Doug, he's telling me that you wouldn't answer the door, but you just opened up the curtain and you were giving him snake eyes. And I was just wondering if, like, do you have a problem with the driver? Like, did he do something bad to you? I'm just trying did to... Did you say on May 1st? Yeah, on May 1st. Uh, honestly, I really don't know what you're talking about. You don't remember getting... I, I don't have any issues with our delivery drivers. We, you know, we have FedEx and UPS come to the house. We never had a problem. Yeah, well, he's... We're he's, friendly. <laughs> he's, he says you were just, like, you were just standing at the window... Like, they're in full view, and you were just, like, looking at him. You're just looking and giving him snake eyes. Um, no, that wouldn't have been me. Oh, who else was in your house that would have been doing that? Maybe one of my children. They're coached not to answer the door for strangers. 
Uh, the Sensei Doug said it was an adult, though. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know. Why, how is this coming up now? It's October. Well, we're, I'm just a little bit backlogged here on, on the uh, issues. I'm just going through the list and calling everyone here. But, I mean, if you have a problem with him, you may as well just tell me. It's, it's, you don't have to hide it or anything if, if you don't like the driver. What's your name? Uh, this is Roy. Roy what? Why do you need to know that? Are you going to come over here and give me snake eyes next? Aw. Well, at least he finally answered. I've called him four times since I got this list. Good afternoon. This is Christine. Hey, Christine. This is Roy from the FedEx. Hi. Hey, we were doing a delivery there the other day. I believe it was on a, t on a Monday. Okay. Are, are you not open on Monday? Oh, yeah. That's the only day we're closed. Okay. Well, someone was in there, though. Because our UPS oh, driver... Oh, it, it could have been the owner, maybe in the back, working. Yeah. She but, lives on the property. Well, you know how there's that window up in front? Yep. Um, there was a lady at the window, and she was not letting us in, and she was winking her butthole at the driver. What? Yeah. That's not so, good. Yeah, that's just not very professional. If you could just no. ask her to not wink her butthole at, at our drivers. Yeah, that doesn't seem okay at all okay well I'm, 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 I'm really sorry about that is there anything that i can i can pass along that to I'm, I'm gonna yeah i have yeah, to pass if, along that if, for if sure you could just write down a note that um just please don't wink your butthole at the driver like that because it's not, yeah. not professional yeah yeah you got it oh, are you sure it wasn't you no you i'm did? never here on mondays okay so you only wink your butthole on the other days if the driver shows up <laughs> no no. Okay. Well, I don't think it's that funny. I just, you know, it's like really upset the driver. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm I'm not here on the weekend. I mean, mm -hmm. during the week, you know, in that capacity. So I'm not sure yeah. if you want me to grab her. I can talk. I can have you talk to her. Oh yeah, if she's there. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hold on one second. Thank you. Hello. Hey there. It's Roy from FedEx. Yeah. And we delivered a package there. I guess it was on Monday, a couple Mondays ago. And I guess you were at the window and you thought it'd be funny to wink your butthole at, at the driver. And we, we can't have that. Are you like, are you sick? sick? Are you like really sick? And are you, I want some proof that you're calling from FedEx. What I'm going to file a complaint. I have never heard such a thing in my life. Well, no, we're the ones that should be upset, not you, because you're the one no, that's at the window. No, I'm upset. How dare you? I am a businesswoman. How dare you call with this complaint? Who's ever said that is sick in the head. Well, you have no right to wink your butthole at our drivers. Excuse and, me? And you know what? You know what? This is a bunch of bullshit. If someone has a complaint, I want them to come to this store and tell me, and I am going to file a complaint because I don't believe this is FedEx. You, first of all, you don't make calls on Sundays, and yes, second do. of all, that never happened. We deliver and third every of day. all, if let me finish, let me finish. And if one of your drivers claim that, you ought to fire him on the spot because if you don't, I'll make sure he gets fired. Do you understand me? It was two different drivers. They both do said you you're, understand they me? They both said you're winking your butthole. How dare you? How? How dare you? You're pissing me off. How dare you? What? I'm filing a formal complaint. It pisses me I off. Am How dare you? It pisses you me off that you're waking your butthole at my drivers. How dare you? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. What is your name? I already told you. It's Roy. You should listen. No. I want a last name. Okay, well, you don't have to yell at me. I'm not the one that makes my butthole. I can't hole. believe you're making this call. FedEx has more integrity than that. And if you are FedEx, shame on you. Well, it's, why, why does it in, have anything to do with integrity if you're winking your butthole at my drivers? Listen, you know what? You're not FedEx. Go what? do something better in your life. Then what are you okay? getting upset for? Pardon me? Well, who's that laughing in the background? It's just a big old joke That's to you guys. A, who is that laughing in the background? That's my disabled husband who's a vet. He's laughing. He can't hear the whole conversation. But he's hearing some of it. How Dare he, you? He oh thinks, my God! You know how long I've been dealing with FedEx? Do you know who I am? 
I have integrity in this community. How dare you? Well, I don't believe give you, you anyway. Right. It doesn't give you the I don't right to your wink your butthole at people. I think this is a bunch of baloney. It does not give you the right to wink your butthole at my drivers just because you have okay. integrity. Okay, I'm, I'm ending this phone call, and if you call here again, I'm calling FedEx on Monday, and yeah. I'm going to find out if this is legit. Oh, it's legit. You'll talk to me when you call. You'll see. Who are you? This is Roy. I already told you. No, so, I, I want to know what your position is, Roy. I'm the manager here at the local office. Where's the local office, you, you Roy? Fucking, you fucking idiot. It's, oh. it's right here. Oh, excuse me? What did you just say? I said it's right here. In no. What was that you just said? No, I didn't say anything. You're hearing things. I heard what I heard. No. I'm ending this phone call no. because I'm not wasting my valuable time. And I'm going to just find out the facts. And I'm going to file a formal complaint well, against you. I tell you, you what, if you wink your butthole at any of my drivers again, we won't deliver to your place. Damn, I was not expecting that sort of a response. She pulled the do you know who I am card on me. That's always great. I guess I'm done with this list now. I've called everyone on this list at least four times since I received it. And I've called them on weekends. I've called them in the evenings. They just will not pick up. So I'm finished with this list. And you know what, Vandershire? I'm going to rip it up. I'm ripping up this list. There's nothing you can do about it. Ripping it up. Rip. Take that, Vandershire. Throwing it in my trash can. But thank you for hand delivering me that list in Chicago a few weeks ago. You know what these calls have made me realize, though, is that, I mean, you know, the the list was old when Vandershire gave it to me. He gave it to me in September, and the list was from deliveries in May. And it really didn't even matter that I had this list. I could just call up anybody and say, hey, it's FedEx. We delivered something to you several months ago. Pretty much everyone in America has gotten a delivery from FedEx at some point in the past few months or from UPS. I never know which one it comes from, if it's FedEx or UPS. So I'm going to call a few numbers off of this list that Joe sent me. This is a list of people who are running for office in the upcoming elections. You know, local offices, mayors and stuff, I guess. And I think I forgot to credit Joe the last time I used this list, which was in a hobo sode, I think. I was calling up people on this list and telling them I was in a helicopter above their house and that I'd accidentally drop stuff on their house and stuff. Oops. But yeah, let's try a few of these and see if I can just pretty much do the exact same thing. Hello. Hello, Anthony. Yes. Hey, it's Roy from the FedEx office. Okay. Um, I'm calling to let you know that you don't have any deliveries today. Okay. Like, uh, you won't be getting any deliveries today. Not from FedEx, anyway. I never get none anyways. Yeah, well, we're just going to... This is a new service we provide. Uh, we're going to be calling you every single day to let you know that you don't have deliveries. And if well, you don't have to do that because I haven't ordered nothing. I know that, but it's just so you know that you won't be getting any deliveries. And if you are getting a delivery, we won't call. If I am getting a delivery? Yeah, I will, we will not call you, but we're going to be calling you every day. What the fuck? This is weird. What, what are you, why are you cursing at me? Hey, who cursed? You're going to curse. I, I didn't curse. You just cursed. I'm just calling okay, to let so you know that we're... Very good. Thank you. Uh, bye. <laughs> he said, what the fuck at the end? He did curse, right? Am I crazy? He told me I cursed. I don't think I cursed. Now I have to go back and listen and see if I really did. I probably did. I'm probably developing Tourette's because of this show. Hello? Hello, Nicole? Hey, it's Roy from the FedEx office. I'm calling to let you know that you don't have any package deliveries coming today. Okay. And, um, yep, just nothing arriving today. We'll call you up tomorrow and let you know again. Uh, Okay, I'm not sure what this is about. Oh, it's just a new service we provide. We're going to call you up every single day that you don't have a package delivery, just so, you know, you're not expecting anything and you'll know that nothing's going to be arriving. So I I should expect a phone call from you guys every day I don't get a package? Correct, yes. Usually it'll be earlier. We're just we're still um you know, we're still still uh, trying to get more efficient at this whole system. Yeah, but, but I don't need, I don't get that many packages. So <laughs> that's a really weird service. Yeah. Well, this way you'll know for sure that you you're not going to have a package cuz you'll get a phone call, oh. you won't be expecting it. 
Okay. You That's can, really oh, okay. You can, Hi. You can still get a package from the post office or UPS or DHL or whatever, but not from FedEx today. Yeah, but like I said, I get like one package a month, so I I'm gonna get like twenty nine calls a month. Let me know that I'm not getting a package. Yes, exactly. I could see if I was if I if I was see I could see if I was a person that received a lot of packages, but I don't. So mm-hmm. that seem doesn't. I just, it just, that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard of. Oh, well, it's just so, a nice I, service we're doing. Like, and, and if you are getting a package, you won't receive a call. So, so can, I, can I opt out of that? So, because <laughs> I, I would just rather be surprised and, and have a package on my porch as oh, opposed no, no, to getting a phone call every... Yeah, it's just, like there's really no system in place yet to opt out of it. You're just going to get a call every single day. And you can just not answer the call. I mean, like, uh, we'll just leave a message on your machine. Yeah, but I'm in. I'm running for office, so I'm taking a lot of calls that I don't know the an- that I don't know the number. So I'm this, no, this is way. crazy. All right, well, thanks no, for letting me know. <laughs> no, th- this way you'll 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 get that message, and you know you won't receive a package, and you know you don't no, have to pick like, up the again, phone. But like again, I don't get that many packages, so I think it's a really weird service to let me know I'm not getting one. When I, I think I'd rather have a call. So- I think their idea, like, you know, I'm, I'm not the one that invented this or anything. It's FedEx, but sure. Um, I think their idea is that they want you to get more packages through FedEx so you'll get less calls. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, that's my guess. I, I'm, I'm not speaking for FedEx. I don't. I don't. Just, I just think it's very absurd. That's all. I just, that's... Um because I don't use Amazon a lot. I don't, you know, I could see like, you know, like a business or somebody who, you know, shops mostly through Amazon, that, you mm-hmm. know, if you get a pack, but just as somebody who rarely gets a package, especially from a FedEx, oh, um, well, I just think this what? is a very weird, <laughs> but I appreciate, I know you're just doing your job. I'm not, I'm not trying to rip on you, but oh, just, yeah. I feel like I'm being, I feel like I'm being pranked right now. That's all. So, well, I appreciate you let me know, and um, will it be this number every time? Yeah, yeah, this number, unless you uh, update your file with a new number, you know, the next time okay. you send a package. Okay, well, I will save this number, and if I get a call, I will note it and ignore it. So, thank you for letting me know. Okay, and if you put another number, we'll call both numbers. We'll call this number and your new updated number. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Sure, no problem. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, she was nice. She hates our new service, but she's not going to yell at me about it like most people would. That's very nice of her, keeping her cool and not insulting me. Well, she kind of insulted FedEx. She's like, I don't get packages, especially from FedEx. Like, what the hell was that little jab about? Maybe it's because she's running for office, though. She's got she's to gotta keep a good public image, you know, and not blow up at people. Good afternoon, Mr. King. Uh, hey, Lynn, this is Roy from the FedEx office. Yes. And I'm calling to let you know that you don't have any package deliveries today. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what this is regarding, and I want to make sure that I do until before you hang up. You want to make sure that what? That I know why you're calling. Oh, I'm calling to let you know that you don't have any package deliveries coming today over at <laughs> Drive. Yeah, why would I think there is something coming? Oh, well, no, this is just a new service we provide. We just call you up every day that you don't have a package delivery, and we let you know that you don't have any packages coming, and that way you won't be expecting them. Something's, there's something wrong, Roy, because I've never signed up for anything. But, by the way, I did get something delivered, a, a huge 200-pound item, Whoa. two of them, and I only paid for one. But it wasn't today, though, right? Nope, it was last week. Oh, okay. See, they, see, that doesn't even matter. It, it's a, it's just about today. Today, you don't have any deliveries coming in. Yeah, but I, again, I have no idea why you're calling me. There's, is this work related, personal related, as far as the items I would be receiving? Oh, I don't know. We don't look in the boxes. We, we have no idea what you're receiving. I'm, I'm just saying you don't have any deliveries coming in today. We're gonna call you up every single day that you don't have deliveries. Why? Just to, just to let you know that you don't have any any deliveries coming in, and if you don't receive I'm, a call, then you'll know you're gonna, then you'll know that a package is on its way. Right, there's a mistake here. I'm telling Why? you right now, there's no reason I should get calls every day. Oh no, it's not just you. We're doing this to everyone in the area. It's like a new service we're providing for free. 
Well, I don't want any calls unless I'm getting a package, okay? Well, no, that's not the way it works. We only call you when you're not receiving a package. No offense, but I'll probably block the number because I can't get calls every single day. Well, we'll, we'll I, it's coming from a call center, so it's going to come from a different number every time, so you won't be able to block it. But it's just Take my name off the list, please. Oh, no, there's no way to opt out yet. It's a new service, and we haven't de developed a way yet to opt out of it. But it's and this is what company? I'm with FedEx. I'm with the local FedEx office here. In okay, well, I, want, I definitely want to opt out. People don't want to get phone calls for nothing. Well, That's no, it's the not, most ridiculous thing it's not I've for ever nothing. heard. It's not for nothing. It's to let you know that you don't have any packages, because otherwise you might be expecting a package. I guess I'd know that when I found it on my doorstep. Well, no, you're not going to find it on your doorstep if it's on a day that you don't receive any packages. Okay, well, I want to opt out, Roy. I'll tell you that right now. Is there someone I can call at FedEx? Um, I don't know who. I mean, you could call here at the local office, I guess. Okay, but what is I, that phone I, number? I don't see why you're being difficult about it, though. No, I, I'm not difficult. I just don't want any phone, more phone calls than I already get. Well, saying that I don't have a delivery because ninety five percent of the time I won't have a delivery. Well, it's just one call per day is all, and you don't even have to answer. We'll just leave a message for you on your machine or your voicemail. Yeah, but how do I know it's FedEx? Because um, we'll we'll say on the message we'll be like, hey, it's FedEx. You don't have any deliveries today. Thanks for. No, I mean when 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 the phone call comes in. Mm -hmm. How do I know whether to answer it or not? Because I get many calls for work. Well, it'll probably say FedEx on the caller ID. I know I don't want to, and it's no offense to you at all. I just, I could see it doesn't my it doesn't make common sense. I'm a really smart common sense girl, and mm -hmm. I could see it if I had a delivery to let me know that I had a delivery, but not to let me know I don't have a delivery. That's crazy. Well, all the companies are going to be doing this soon. You're going to get one from UPS every day and one from the post office. It's just to let you know that you don't have any deliveries coming in. Otherwise, you might be... Are you my post carrier? No, no, I'm with FedEx. I have nothing to do with the post okay. office. I'm just saying, like, the whole industry is making this move. We're all going to be uh, just calling up every single day, letting you know that you don't have deliveries. Get ready, because people aren't going to like it. Oh, I, I, you're the first person to complain. Everyone else thinks it's awesome. Well, I'm so, not complaining. So I'm just, just saying I don't want to be a part of it. I want to opt out of it. Um, the answer is no. No, you cannot opt out. We're just going to call you up every day and let you know that you don't have deliveries. Okay. Thank you, well, Roy. I appreciate it. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, we'll be talking bye. to you tomorrow then. Okay. Bye. Oh, she's laughing. She knows it's a prank. See, that's the problem with these candidate numbers is that they're in an area, because I remember this from a couple years ago when I got this candidate list from the same person from Joe, but there is a popular radio DJ in this area who I guess does a lot of pranks in the local area, and a bunch of people just assume that I'm him. And he also uses the name Bob Dabalina in his calls. Or he used to, at least. I don't know if he still does, since I took over the Google search results for Bob Dabalina prank calls. I sure showed him. But she seemed thoroughly confused until the very end. So I don't know. Thank you. Hey, Tracy, this is Roy. I'm the FedEx driver. Um, I dropped off a package for you today. You did? Yes. Uh, on drive. Okay. Uh, huh. are, okay. Are you home today? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I, I didn't leave it at the house. I, I left it kind of um, down the street a bit on the corner by the, you know where the stop sign is? On the corner where the stop sign is. Yeah. Like it's a, it's okay. around to bend a little bit. Do you know where Biscayne Avenue is? Oh, right, right. Yeah, you know where the stop okay. sign is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, do. I, I just okay. kind I kind of left it. You know, there's there's sort of a ditch. I mean, not a ditch really, but I, I just I put it there by the stop sign. Okay. I, I didn't. Is there a reason why you did that? Why I didn't bring it up to your house? Yeah. Uh, I just don't like. I just don't like you. Okay. <laughs> no offense or anything. I just, I just didn't want to. I, I just don't like you. 
I didn't want to knock on the door because of, you know, last time. Oh. Okay. Bye. What do you mean, bye? Oh, see, <laughs> that's why I don't like her. It hangs right up on me. Hello. Hello, Terry. It is. Hey there. It's Roy from the FedEx. I'm your FedEx driver. Okay. And I dropped off a package today at your house. They're on drive. Uh huh. Um, are you home today? I am. I just got home. Okay, great. Yeah, I didn't leave it at the house though. I I left it up the street. I left it kind of um, maybe two blocks away, sort of. It's kind of huh? around. It's kind Are of, you bringing it here now? No, no. I just I left it on the side of, on the side of the road. You left a package for me on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah. Kind of by a stop sign. It's just up the road a bit. Why would you do that? Um. Well, you guys didn't have a wheelchair ramp, so I, I couldn't get up on the porch. You're supposed I to don't understand what you're talking about. Maybe you have the wrong people. Oh, no, it's definitely for you. Um, Terry, 38 drive. Right. That's I it. don't need a wheelchair ramp. Well, the, sometimes, you know, delivery people do. And your, your house isn't wheelchair accessible. So I just left it out, out on the street. No, that's not okay. I have multiple sclerosis can barely make it to my car, let alone out down the block. Yeah, but but I, I couldn't even make it up to your porch, so I, I just left it down the street. There's nothing in the way up to my porch but a brick sidewalk. I know, but uh, I am in a wheelchair, so my wheelchair can't re really get over the hump. Is this a joke? No, why would I kid about this? Well, because nobody in that... You would have left it by a tree in my driveway. They've done that before. I know, but I just, um, I guess in a way it was kind of retaliation. Because you well, I'll tell you what. In a way of retaliation, go pick it up and bring it to my driveway. I'll find it in the driveway. Well, they always leave it by the tree or the chairs that are out there in the driveway. Yeah, well, this is not okay, sir. Do you know where the court is? It's right by the stop sign. It's not okay. I, I think this is a joke. What? No, why would it be a joke? That doesn't make any sense. Well, because it well, doesn't make any sense that a FedEx driver is calling me on the telephone to tell me to go down the street to pick up my package. Well, it's just because you didn't have a wheelchair ramp. Oh, come on. That's silly. No, nobody around here does. Right, but you know, maybe they should. Maybe you should set an example for the other neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe I should set an example. You're probably right. Yeah, I think you should. Well, yeah, you're probably right. It would be nice, but I couldn't afford it. I may need it in the near future, but I couldn't afford it. It's real easy because I use my walker all over the place. So. Yeah, but, you know, I, I, I can't even afford a walker. Hey, we have an extra. Come on in. Oh, my gosh. Okay, maybe... Hey, can you tell your dog to shut up? No, that's what I got him for. He's barking really loud. What's he barking at? I don't know. Noise? Yeah, probably you. Probably you yelling too loud. Oh, I'm not yelling at all. I know. I'm just kidding. Well... <laughs> Okay, now what is this call all about? Uh, I'm just a prank caller. I, I'm not really with FedEx. Uh, I was just well, kidding. Well, it showed up as FedEx on my ID. I know. I, I actually work at FedEx, and you don't, but uh -huh. you don't have a package today. I didn't expect any, but go on. I know. I, so uh, we're just we're bored here today at the FedEx office, and we thought we'd make a prank call. <laughs> and now you want me to believe that. <laughs> you don't you believe just anything. just had this huge thing on the news about all these carriers hiring people. Hiring for what? The holiday season deliveries. Oh, yeah, but, you know, the, the busy season hasn't started quite yet. 
That, that starts next no, month. No, that's why they're hiring now to train them so they're ready for the busy season. You're not a very good prank caller. What are you talking about? What? What? I used to be a perfect prank caller. What kind of prank calls did you make? Oh, all sorts. Oh, I on. harass all the ones that are going to come and arrest me because my taxes are overdue. They hate me. You, you would make harassing prank calls to to the IRS? Well, when they leave me a number telling me they're the IRS, and if I don't call and go to Walmart and pay them with a Walmart card, that they're going to come right over and get me. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the fake I- IRS. What do you say to them? Do you just waste their time? Yeah, pretty much like you're doing. But <laughs> I'm great. smiling. I am, too. Even though I'm a well, bad I'm prank glad. caller, I'm smiling. You're a good prank caller if you're smiling. Didn't you do it to get a laugh? Yeah, but you're supposed to get really angry with me and scream at me, and you didn't do that. Oh, I choose my battles wisely, son. My daughter has breast cancer surgery in the morning. I've got enough to worry about, yell about, and cry about, but I'm not going to let that happen. That's good. Well, you know what? I'm just going to call your neighbors. I'm going to call the next person on the list. I'm going to tell them they need a wheelchair ramp. Well... I wish you the best of luck with your wheelchair ramps. I hope it And congratulations out. to FedEx for fi- hiring those of an alternative lifestyle. That's right. They, they need more people like us. I don't know, but you made my day. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> All right, Good honey, bye. It. All right, bye. I'm meeting such nice people today. This is great. I thought she was going to tell me about some awesome prank calls she used to make back in the 70s or something. But no, she's just fucking with those fake IRS people. Hello? Hi, Karen? Yes? It's Roy. I'm your FedEx driver. I needed to let you know that um, you have a package today. I do? Yeah, and I dropped it off. And um, are you home today? I I didn't leave it on your porch. Where'd you leave it? I left it kind of down the street. What do you mean down the street? You mean at the end of the driveway? No, no, like at the end of the block, I guess you'd call it. Why would you leave it at the end of the block? Uh, just because I don't like you. I, I left it, you know where Lynn Lane is? Excuse me? Do you know where, what? The, where Lynn Lane is? The corner of Lynn Lane and <laughs> Drive? Yeah. I left it right there, kind of near the stop sign, but in the ditch. Why? Because I just didn't want to bring it all the way. All the way over. Are you kidding me? No. What? You need to deliver it. I'm not expecting anything. I don't know if this is a joke or not. Oh, no. But I have no idea why you would do that. Uh, just, just, you know. I have no idea who you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with FedEx. If I call FedEx and tell them what you did? You know, do you think they'd be okay with that? Well, you know, they're, they're kind of shorthanded these days, so... You need they, to deliver that to my house. You just don't go leaving a package anywhere. Can't you just, like, walk down the street and get it, though? It's not that no, far away. No, I cannot. It's just, it's like two blocks. It's over on no, Lindley. No, no, no. It's just, it's under the stop sign. Answer to that, yeah, the answer to that is no. Why not? What are you, you know, are you lazy? Am I what? Are you, are you just being lazy? Is that why you don't want to go get it? I have no idea what you're saying or talking about. It's, it's, just, okay. it's just a package. I have never, yes. I've never had this happen before. This is not normal. You need to deliver it to the address on the package. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll drive That's by and see if do. it's still there, I guess. You, you need to go and get it and deliver it. Okay. Because well, I'm going to be calling FedEx now. For what? Like to tell on me? You need to deliver that package, and you need to just stop this nonsense right now. What do you mean nonsense? I'm, I'm just doing my job. I'm a delivery driver. No, no you're, you're not, and you know you're not. No, stop it. Get the package. Deliver it. Okay, well, I'll drive by, and I'll just kind of like, kind of look half-heartedly in that direction and see if it's still there. Yeah, you do that. I will. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Hello? Hello, Tony? Yes. Hey there, it's Roy. I'm the FedEx driver. Uh, I delivered a, a package for you today. Oh, you did? Yeah, are you home? 
Yeah, I didn't hear you ring the bell or anything. Oh, yeah, I didn't bring it to your house. I, I left it at the neighbor's house. Um, at the whose house? At, at a neighbor's house, about I don't oh. know, quite a few houses down from you. Oh, was it a guy with a red door? Uh, no, no, it's, uh, I don't remember the color of his door. It's over in the apartment it complex. Man or a man or a woman? I don't even know. Um, but I left it in his bushes. It, it, there was nobody home there either. So I just threw it in his bushes. He lives Why on, would you put it in his bushes? I don't know. You know, it just, it seemed like a good place that nobody would take it. He lives over on Meadowwood Drive. Wait a minute. Um, in the Where, apartment. What is the address that you delivered it to? Well, it ha the address on the package is 49 Boulevard. Yeah, so why would you deliver it to someone on Meadowbrook? Um, you know, I, I just I didn't want to come all the way to your house, and I already had this other delivery here at the apartment complex. So well, I just... I, I'm really sorry, but... You're going to have to just bring it to my porch. Well, no, just come to the apartment building. It's in the bushes in the front, like by the swimming no, pool. No, I'm not doing that. Why not? You need to deliver, because I am going to work. You need to deliver where right on my porch. There's no, no reason to have anything in bushes. No, you just need to come over to the bushes and crawl in there. It's like right in the bottom. You just reach your arm in. Okay, there she goes. She does not approve of my delivery methods. Hello, Hugh? Speaking. It's Roy from FedEx. I delivered a package to you today. Oh, you did? Yes. Are you home today? I am home right now. Okay. Well, I didn't bring it to your house. Oh, uh, I left well, how it... did you deliver it? <laughs> well, it's, it's down the street a bit. I left it in some bushes. What? I left it in some bushes. It's on your street still. Well, but it's um, it's like is this a, a joke call or what's going on? Oh here? no, no, I wouldn't joke. It's like if you leave your house and you go down the street to the left, down yeah. Eleven Mile Road, and there's a house. Well, why would you do that? I just didn't feel like driving all the way to your place. You got to be kidding me! This got to be a joke. No, I, I wouldn't kid about this. I, I just I'm supposed to let you know. If I can't make it all the way over to your house, and I did not make it all the way to your house today. Well, why couldn't you make it all the way to my house? Well, it's not that I couldn't. It's just that I didn't really want to, because I've got a oh. bunch of deliveries to make isn't today. That your, isn't that your job to do that? Well, usually, but we're really shorthanded this season, because, you know, it's the holiday season. This has got to be a joke. I can't believe This has got to be a joke. Why would I joke about this? That I'm, sir? Why would he hang up? Hello, I'm, I, I just talked to someone there. I'm from FedEx about the package. About what package? I delivered a package today. Did, did you... I, I don't know why your husband must have hung up on me. Um, you said you already delivered it? Well, I, deli I didn't deliver it to your house. I delivered it down the street. It's like maybe a block away. It's still, uh, it's still on 11 Mile Road, but it's, um, it's at 45... Okay, and but it's for me. Well, it's, it's for who? It's for the name Hugh. Okay. And I left it in the bushes in front of that house. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe somebody will find it and bring it here. Well, I wouldn't count on it because it's it's under there. You have to walk over there, and and it's just like right underneath there, and you just get it from there. It's kind of okay. like in the ditch area. Okay, we'll take a look. Uh, any particular reason why you delivered it under a bush? Uh, I just don't like you guys. <laughs> okay. Why All righty then, we'll go get it. Why is that so funny to you? Because <laughs> it just is. You'll have to get in line if you don't like us. Okay. Well, <laughs> whatever. Whatever. This is exactly okay. why I don't like you. Yeah, well, you know what? It, it, it happens. Yep, I guess so. Probably a lot with you. I guess so. Okay. All right, well, thanks for the call anyway. Sure, no problem. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Bye. I got to stop telling people I don't like them. Hello? Hello, Colleen? Yes. 
It's Roy from FedEx. It's who? Roy from FedEx. Um, I delivered a package to you today. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes, but I left it down the street, um, kind of underneath a stop sign. Okay. So you have to go over there and get it. Um, okay, so I guess I... What corner? What stop sign? Uh, it's on the corner of Street and Drive. Like okay. right there under, underneath so, the stop sign. So you, you couldn't find the house? Oh, no. I know where your house is. There, there's just no, uh, there's no wheelchair ramp up to the front door. Oh. And I, I'm, I'm, so I, I just, uh, you know, I just left it down the street instead. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. Okay, so it's at the stop sign. Yes. Yep. Like right underneath Instead the stop of sign. Like a mailbox or. Yeah, yeah. I just left it. It's it's not even under the stop sign. It's kind of in the street. Like I didn't even stop. I just kind of tossed it out, and it landed on the road, but close to the grass. Okay. That's like, that's kind of strange. <laughs> what do you mean strange? What I mean, strange? Yeah. Well, actually, I'm I'm coming around the corner right now, and I mean to have a package in the street. I mean, are you walking over there? Seems, I'm around the corner right now. Right now, I'm at the corner of, and I don't see a package at all. Are you walking? Uh, no, I'm driving. Uh -huh. Or not? I I'm in the car. I see. Okay. Yeah, it's just, I didn't see any kind of package. It's right. Well, did you stop and look around? It's kind of by that tree. I. Well, <laughs> well, we have a couple trees here. Well, it might have got run over. I don't know. I'm just saying it, it's out. It You're... should be out there somewhere. Because it, it was okay. In, hold it, on. It was in the road. It may have gotten. I... It may have gotten flattened. <laughs> Um, well, I will go look around for a flattened package. Okay. Yeah, um, it wasn't that big. Okay, wait. Hmm? So it's at the corner of... And I, I can't see it. I'm, what's huh. your name again? Uh, this is Roy. Roy? Yeah, maybe, I'm sorry, maybe, Roy. I just can't see it. Maybe someone took off with it. Well, it could be. Because this is the season where we have, we have a lot of package thieves. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, where, who was it from, or did you? Um, oh, I, I didn't. I don't know. Did you check? I just, I marked it yeah. as I marked that you signed for it and left it in the street. Is this Tom? Tom? No, I'm Roy. I'm with the FedEx. Roy. I, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Roy, but uh, package not quite delivered. Oh well. Uh, better luck next time, I guess. All righty. All right. Have a nice All right. day. Take care. You too. Bye. All righty. Bye-bye. Hello? Hello, Gwen? Yes. It's Roy from FedEx. I'm the delivery guy. Okay. And uh, I left a package for you today. Oh, you did? Yeah. Did you find that? Nope. Just a second. I'm headed to the front door right now. Okay. Ah, yes. There's a package. Oh, no, that one's not for me, though. I didn't leave it on your front door. Does it say it's from FedEx? No. Um, yeah, see, that one's from someone else. Did you leave it in the garage? No, no. I left it um, three doors or two doors down. You know the house on the corner that has a pool in back? Yeah. I left it in, like, by their pool. You have to go in their backyard. The people, uh, the people that are south of, there's two corner houses with pools. Oh, they're um, on, they're on and lane. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm walking over there. Okay. Okay. Are you going to go in the backyard? <laughs> well, I, uh, while I uh, have you on the phone. I'm headed down to their yard. Hang okay. on a second. I climbed the fence. Oh my gosh. I don't know them all that well, but. <laughs> 
I'm sure they'll be. They'll understand. It's a FedEx thing. Um, so you left it by the pool. You climbed the fence. Yeah, but I think there's uh, a gate. There is a gate. I'm just into parkour. Um, so where did you leave it in there? I don't want to go through their gate until I go knock on the door, but um, where did you think you left it? Did you leave it by the gate or did you leave it? Oh, more like it's, pre it's pretty much in the pool. Like they have this uh, boat toy, like a floaty thing. Uh, and I put it on the boat toy. I, and, um, I'm going to go ring their bell um, and see if, because I don't see a floaty toy right now. Did you, are you in the back? Yeah. Oh, man, I hope it didn't sink, because it looked like, I don't think it would sink. It wasn't that heavy. But, yeah, I used a pole to... Put, put. I, I'm not understanding why you would do this. I mean, why didn't you just take it back to FedEx or leave me a note or something? Um, I don't know. I'm... <laughs> I'm just Are you new to the job or something? No, no. I've been a delivery driver for a couple of years now. Oh. I'm just ornery. Um. <laughs> Let me ring the bell. Why can't you just go in the backyard and, and get it? Well, I'm going to go do that now that nobody's answered the door. Oh, wait. Hang on just a second. Okay, great. This should be interesting. I'm the FedEx guy. He says he left a package for me. In a floaty. I didn't want to go in your backyard without telling you. Okay, I'll meet you back there. <laughs> yeah, he kind of laughed. <laughs> That's great. How did that go? Like, are they confused? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all confused. Well, I'm not confused. <laughs> I'm not even sure what it is I'm expecting, so... Well, what was the um, other thing that was on your porch? I don't know. I haven't uh, opened it, because I just found it since you called me. Uh, well, you're welcome for that, at least. <laughs> yeah, I can't get his gate open. He must have it uh, locked somehow. I know. That's why I had to climb the fence. You should ask him, why don't they ever invite you? I can't you? get it open. Ask them oh, why they don't I, ever invite you over to pool parties. Because they have little kids and I don't. Yeah, but that shouldn't make a difference. That they're, they, they should just let you come over anyway and hang out in the pool. Uh, there is no floaty in the pool. There's no package in a floaty. The guy who owns the house is standing there with me. He didn't see anything. Hmm, that's weird. Do you think he's, do you think he stole it? No. I think, I think this is a very strange phone call, actually. I don't understand why the FedEx guy would leave a package for me two doors down in the neighbor's pool. I don't understand that. Um, and we can't find it. Yeah, that's just the way, and I, just the way we do things sometimes. It's a busy I've never known FedEx to do this to, ever to me. I'm 65 years old. I've never seen something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome to 2018, I guess. Well, I hope it was nothing of value because nobody's seen it. I don't know what I was supposed to be expecting from FedEx. My husband had a birthday two days ago. Maybe somebody sent something. Do you want me to talk to the neighbor? Like, can you put him on the phone? Uh, I've left his house now. He, oh. he didn't find anything. I think he could he be lying, possibly. Uh, no. He's a fine man with a wife and two kids, and we've lived in the neighborhood next to him for 10 years. And he's never had you over for a pool party? I've been to his house for a pool party, but he has little kids. We don't socialize, you know, regularly. I don't have little kids. But did, did he even let you use the pool, though? <laughs> Dude, what, what the hell? I'm, I'm not getting this, and um, 
you know, if this is a wild goose chase, it's not very funny. I'm busy. I'm supposed to be leaving. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of disturbed now. So if there's a package for me and it's lost, and you, you need to go back and record it as undelivered. Okay. Because it I wasn't just, delivered. I wrote down that you signed for it. What? I, just, I wrote down that you signed for it when I put it in the pool. It was one I of those, did not. I know, but I, I just... I did not sign for it when you put it in the pool, so that's on you. I know, but I just scribbled in the thing, because you can never read those signatures anyway. I know, and I'm going to say I wasn't there. I'm going to say I would never have had you do what you just told me you did. So you fix this. Okay, well, I, I'm I don't sorry, know. I'm sorry, this is I, a crazy thing. I thought I left it in a reasonable spot. It's just two houses down. It's Why out. didn't you leave it on the porch? Why didn't you talk? I have neighbors uh, across the street and down the other places that were home. Because well, nobody had... You a, know, if you're going to leave it somewhere else, you need to leave me a note that said you did that. You didn't even do that. But you didn't have a wheelchair ramp. <laughs> no, you're right. I don't have a wheelchair ramp. Yeah, why? like that's why I, I, like I wouldn't be able to get up to the door. Except that you climbed the guy's fence. So your story's not hanging together. I forgot about that part. Yeah. What the hell is this? Well, I didn't say I was in a wheelchair. I just, I'm just basically protesting the fact that nobody in this neighborhood has a wheelchair ramp. Dude. What? I don't know what your issue is, and I don't know what your problem is, but if you had a package to deliver to me, it didn't get here. And you need to figure out how to get it to me. Are you sure that guy I didn't, didn't know just what take was it? Coming? What? Are you sure the neighbor just didn't take it? Cause yes, you... I'm positive. I'm positive that guy would not take a package that was for me. I mean, he would think it was weird that it was in his pool, and he would come knock on my door and go, hey, this is really weird. I don't know why, but there's a package in my pool for you. That's how, you know, we know each other that well. Hmm. I, I, but he only does not had, make any sense at all. But he, but he only had you over once in ten years, dude. No, we. This is none of your business. You tell me you you delivered a package to my neighbor's house. It's not there. Well, it's you pretty, tell me you said that I signed for it. I didn't. It's pretty normal. So you need to find the package and you need to get it to me. Okay. And I'll, it's I'll, not my issue. It's yours. Okay, fine. I'll go over there and I'll talk to him and I'll try and get him to give the package to me I, and tell him it's, uh, you know, he's it's it's not cool to steal his neighbor's mail. Yeah, you do that. I'm gonna, you do that. Um, I will. And take it back to the FedEx office and I'll go get it over there. No, I could leave, leave it. Leave me a, a note where I have to go get it. I'm, I'm no, not going to be home, dude. I'll deliver it again. I'm leaving. I'll, I'll deliver it again. I'll, I'll just leave it with the neighbor if you're not there. Whatever. How, whatever, you, whatever your protocol is, you didn't follow it. That's for sure. No, it's completely normal so, for us to leave a package with a neighbor. Yeah, well, nobody says leave it in a neighbor's pool where you have to jump the fence to put it there and, you know, come on. That, that's ridiculous. Just, you know, I don't know why you would do that. Well, don't tell So I got to go. I'm supposed to. Where, where are you going today? Ma'am? In my package. Oh, I'm sorry. You cut out there. Where are you going today? It doesn't matter. Bye. All right. Bye. Oh, man. I, I could not hold it together on that one. I kept having to mute so I could crack up laughing. <laughs> I'm kind of sad I didn't get to talk to the neighbor. That would have been great. But holy shit, this new idea that I have stumbled upon, telling people that I left their package somewhere else, that's the best idea ever. I've got to do this some more. Okay, I, I, think I, <laughs> I think I have the number of the people's house that she went to. I just looked on 411.com, and there appears to be a listed phone number. And I really hope they pick up. Sorry, the mailbox is full. Darn it, come on. I really want to talk to these people. Sorry, the mailbox is full and... One more try. They've got to pick up after one more try, right? Man, you know how she said they have a pool down at the other end of the road? Like, their pool is like one-third of the size as these people's pool. And it's like all greenish, yellowish. Like, it's disgusting. They don't take care of their Sorry, pool. the mailbox is full. 
I should have said, oops, I told you the wrong house. It's the other one. It's the one with the gross pool. Sorry, the mailbox is full and there is not enough space to leave a message. Well, crap. I really wanted to talk to them. I just noticed that the lady I talked to, like I'm, I'm scrolling over their house with Google Maps now, but in Gwen's yard, uh, they mow the yard uh, horizontally, like parallel to the, the front street, I guess, and so does their next door neighbor. But they don't, like it, it's different mowers doing this, but they seem to be the exact same width and they match up each other's lines perfectly. Like they are really careful about making sure that their striped lines across the lawn are perfectly in sync with each other. It's crazy. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I just think that's kind of interesting. And then the person on the other side of Gwen's house doesn't do that at all. They must hate those people, that they don't match up their lawn to theirs. What horrible neighbors. Anyway, I'm done with this whole FedEx thing. Let's listen to some voicemails. I'm going to do this again, though. This has got to be a live show idea, this whole FedEx delivery thing. Hey, Brad, it's Crazy Calvin. Hey, Calvin. I just wanted to congratulate you on 500 shows. 502. And as my gift to you, I have a joke. What do you call a nun in a wheelchair? I give up. Virgin Mobile. <laughs> cactus, cactus. Thanks, Crazy Calvin. What a great joke. Someone really needs to make a phone joke book. Hey, RBPP. Can you provide those uh, phone numbers, that the, the old MCI one and the other one that gives you, that tells you sentences or whatever? Those are sentences. pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I had them written down and I lost them. Uh, but if you could provide that, that'd be awesome. I forget what that number is called. It has a weird name. Laugh Track Matt would know. You should listen to the Party Time Show. They still call that number all the time with the weird phrases used for telephone testing purposes but hopefully somebody in the comments will reply with the phone number or the website or any other information about it someone do that hey rb been listening to you for about i don't know since 2005 at least wow I to say, thanks man get a life. great job and uh, thank you no everything goes great all right buddy. love you bye-bye oh he loves me you guys I wish I was capable of returning love. Hey, Brad, it's Justin from hey. Maryland. I was just hey. listening to Snowplow Show 500, and you got a voicemail that said, I tried to get you to identify what uh, area code 401 was. Oh, crap. You said it was Maryland. Did I fuck up? But I think you had a little bit of dyslexia oh, man. there. Maryland's area code is 410, I'm an idiot. which is where I'm calling you from now. But the 401 area code is, do you know it? Yeah, it's Rhode Island. Rhode oh. Island. That's the area code for Rhode Stupid Island. me. Anyway. I'm getting old. Uh, quick question. You know, so. Do you remember which snowplow show, or if you could give me any idea, or maybe a listener knows, the shows where you twisted your your voice knob back and forth, and you were like, hey, re, hey, re, re, and you did all that, because I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Um, first of all, please do, do more of that. I do not which one that was from. I have uh, no idea. Also, if you can give me any idea if, if you remember anything about how I could find uh, the call, those calls yeah, that, where know. you did that, and, and made your know. voice rolling high, and did all that, please do more of that. That was absolutely okay, hilarious. Okay, I will try to do that. Anyway, uh, thanks, Skeks, Skeks. I really should try to do that more in shows. That's kind of fun. I mean, in, in phone calls, not just in the voicemails, because it's kind of boring here, isn't it? But I don't know where that's from. That's another job for the people in the comments to figure out for me. Hey, Bradley, it's uh, your boy, Rumpled Foreskin. Hey, Rumpled Foreskin. Uh, on uh, YouTube, and I've seen uh, people on this uh, game on Steam called Comedy Night. There were, uh, Comedy Night's like a game where uh, people can uh, get up on stage and, like, say jokes and they get booed off stage or whatever and while well, everybody's yelling at them but people were doing prank calls on it and i think that you should uh, check it out and uh, you should do it as uh, well okay uh that could be fun yeah go fuck yourself love you bye okay thanks rumpled foreskin comedy nights on steam i'm gonna be on there soon doing my special styles of improv via the telephone looks like it's five bucks i put it on my wish list Maybe I'll buy that later this week and see how it works. But I bet you they only give you a couple minutes for something good to happen. So I would just have to, like, dial a number and hope for the best. Hi, Roy. Hey. I'm a little disappointed that you didn't keep us updated about the number. 
I already put the, the notes on ten cars. Oh, oops. I'm sure they've probably called the police now since they... I kind of did keep you, you know, updated. They're, they're all on... I mentioned it on shows. I did those automatic redial shows, but I put intros on the automatic redial shows to tell you that the number was gone. It was broken. Hopefully I posted something on Twitter about that. Uh, expensive cars, American... Uh, oh, unless you're on YouTube. Because if you're on YouTube, you don't get to hear the automatic redial shows. Because I don't post them on there, because they're already up there. So, whoops. Uh, sports cars. Sorry, YouTube people. Mercedes, Benzes, Lincoln Town cars. Yeah. I'm a jerk. I'm sure Sorry. they're probably going to call the police, because you didn't really keep up to date on the number... I did so. You didn't tell us that it was disconnected. You at least have to have known anyway, by now, you, right? Big hobo. You got my hopes up or nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is Master C Murder from New Orleans. Oh, hey. Something, from something from New Orleans. Sorry, everyone, about the carding stuff this year. I've still got four carding numbers here that I've never picked up. Let's try them right now, one last time, and see if they pick up. I've called this lady four times now. This is the fifth time. Your call has been full. Nope. No answer from her. Let's change my phone number and try this next one. This is also the fifth time I've called this person. Yes, you've dialed 209. Damn it. All right, next one. Your call has been full. Strike three. Let's try the last one. He has also been tried five times. This sucks. I have a bunch of ideas here I wanted to use, too. Two, four, eight. Darn it. I tried, but I guess Dean Timber is officially over right now. Hi, I'm, uh, Brad. I'm looking for a call you made. Uh, it was like t it was to someone in the Detroit area. You made a bunch of hilarious references to Detroit, which is like with somebody not from here. That's pretty impressive. It was like a year or two ago. I think it's from a homeowners association show. Mm. So if anyone can find that call for me, it would be pretty hilarious. I All made right, thank you. references Bye. to Detroit. I don't know anything about Detroit. I must have been really good at bullshitting in that call. All I know is that it's the murder capital of the entire world. But that information is from the 1980s, from the Goonies movie. That's all I know. Damn it, Brad. It's JD. Hey, I'm JD. I'm listening to episode 501. By the way, congratulations on episode 500. Thanks. And you did the toilet overflow call, and you didn't use the new sound effect that I sent you uh, yeah, with sorry. the sound of the toilet overflowing. You have to use that. I will. Damn, you forgot. I you probably think... haven't even gotten it yet. You gotta go get that shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fucking A. Uh, later. I still haven't caught up on my emails. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. I will update my soundboard eventually. Uh, hey, Brad, it's Corbin. Hey, hey, I got this weird fucking idea while I was uh, listening to your shit, and I know how much you love ideas on the voicemail, so I'm going to yeah. keep it long. Okay, how about uh, since uh, uh, Dean Timber is over and uh, pumpkin carving, yes, I love your idea of that. That is fucking awesome. Carve some idea. pumpkins and shit. But but in in celebration of uh, trick as ho, it could be trick as Halloween, and you can like do some sort of fucking artwork. Subscribe to the Patreon, or like you know carve pumpkins of trick as Halloween pumpkins. All right. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna shut the what, fuck. What a up great now. idea! Fuck you, everybody. Hey, I love you, anyways. Bye. Someone needs to do a pumpkin of a trick ass Halloween. Do that just for Corbin Guy. Yeah, Brad. Hey. Why don't you pick up the goddamn phone? You know, it's you're doing a live not show. Not a phone, it's a voicemail. Um, and you won't pick up live show phones, maybe? And what I'm are you talking you, about? You left this message on Saturday. I didn't do a live show on Saturday. I was on Dwight's show on Saturday. But I wasn't picking up my phone on Dwight's show. And you're not even calling that line. You're calling the PLA voicemail. Just let it ring and ring and ring and ring for three or four minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Dude, man. Is that really this whole voicemail you're going to complain at me? My life's so fucking ruined right now. I don't give a shit what I say. Okay. Um, I don't have to I listen to it, though. This is a three-minute long voicemail. Uh, as long as I can. But anyways, uh... Um... All right, man, thanks for the voicemail. Bye. I'm sure it was a really great three minutes. Hey, Brad. It's you, Brad, from the year 2025. Oh, shit. I've just come to tell you, uh, hey... 
don't start the Snowplow show in 2014. Oh. I know it's two years from okay. now, but you need to keep going with the, with the phone show. All phone right. show is going to be what gets you the great fame. The Snowplow yeah. show will be, be the worst thing you ever okay. do in your life. Thanks, future Good Brad. luck, man. I love you. Bye. You love yourself? Bye. That's weird. Yeah, I don't fucking listen to nothing. Hey, boy, congrats on 500 episodes. Uh, it's me, Parkman. Yeah. Hey, Parkman. Right. Bye. 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 That Fuck sounds up. an awful lot like Jag TV. Thank you. Even though you're a little bit late on that. Hey, Brad. I just got an idea. Well, on the last show, someone said. What is this? You should only get the voice, the ding 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 number. I've got the volume all the, the way up, you guys. Pizza. I can't make well, out any of this. Just give it to the Patreon. Oh, they pay? You should trust them. For next Ding Timber oh, oh, I think he's saying give the Ding Timber number only to the Patreons next year. I guess that's a possibility. And then I'll only do the calls for the Patreons. Ding Timber is now a paid event. What a great idea. Maybe I'll do that. Hi, Brad. Lord of Veggies. Hey. So, um, first of all, I want to know if you got those things I sent you. Yep. Uh, second of all, I, uh, I want I you did. to know that I went ahead and uh, sent an email to ABC13 because, you know, I, I am from the area, but it wasn't me that did this. But I did send them a message mm-hmm. telling them they made a few uh, spelling errors oh, on their uh, nice of you. on their report. So, uh, you know, mostly saying, uh, mostly uh, getting scam confused with prank and uh, identity thieves confused with uh, prank callers. So, <laughs> uh, voice over IP uh, scams you know that, for some uh, they reason. They had that option. So you can go ahead. Anybody else that wants to submit any other misspellings, so like like the carding note now because I've been up for nearly 24 hours. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. So that's great. Lord of Veggies is schooling the TV station on their news reports about PLA. What could go wrong? How now, Plow Shao? It's total second. Long time caller, first time listener, etc. Et yeah, yeah. I just want to let you know that I promoted myself from filthy hobo to co executive producer. Holy that means fuck. you yes, you Brad, take orders from me now. Oh. Okay. Anyways, okay. I'm your new overlord and you have to do what I tell you from now on. Alright, bye. Alright. You didn't give me any commands in this voicemail though. Why not? <laughs> Ding Timber. Ding Timber. Oh, I, hope, I hope you're doing some Ding Tempers, Brad. Okay. I was me. I was Ding Ding Tempers, mate. The best, the best ever. Right, okay. Uh, I was thinking of the near December time. I think I might, I might call up the voicemail. Oh, this is an old voicemail. This one's from September. How is this still in here? Did I play this already? Crap! I hope I'm not replaying around voicemails. Around December time, and I might maybe just ha- it just uh, read a random random question of a random general knowledge question to test out your old grey matter, Brad, and see if you can get the question right. Okay, I'll have a wee look. I'll have a wee look just now for a saying? question for you, a general knowledge you question. You can start writing emails, Nobby guy. One ever. That'd be a lot right, easier Brad. for everyone. Well, that's a, I'll, I'll, I'll get the best question ever. Right, okay? All right, whatever, question? bye. Something about questions, I don't know. Anyway, I have more voicemails sitting in here, but um, I'm tired of listening to them, so I think the show's over. Thank you, Zelfus and David J and Thunor and Brennan and Christine for sponsoring the show today. Your support is appreciated. If you would like to support the show, it's patreon.com slash phone losers. If you were a supporter of the show, you would have gotten two extra episodes last week. But no, you only got to hear the one snowplow show. You sure missed out. Thanks again, Vander Shire, for sending me the FedEx list and causing this entire show to be about FedEx deliveries. I had fun doing the calls today, and I think this needs to be a live show. I need to do an entire live show of me making deliveries to people's houses and doing a bad job at it. That'd be a lot of fun. See you later this week, everyone. I promise there will be another snowplow show this week. I'm not going to flake out like I did last week. You left a package for me on the side of the road?